Hi, hope you had a great day. You're watching JFG Entertainment, and for this video, I'm going to rank in the Eternals from worst to best. And I'm going to be doing this by ranking them by how much I like them overall, by their powers, which are very important to me, by their screen time and influence in the plot of Eternals, uh, by their cool moments. The cool moments were definitely very important. And uh, how much I want to see them going forward into the MCU. Like, which characters I want to have like their own spin-off show or like just to be more into the MCU and all that, all that type of stuff. That's also going to affect my ranking. So, those are the five ways I'm going to be ranking the Eternals from worst to best. And yeah, I really enjoyed Eternals. I thought it was great and I just really want to talk about it. So, if you're like me, then this is the perfect video for you. So, let's watch this whole video. I think you'll definitely enjoy it. Uh, and like I said, I really want to talk about it, so it's a spoiler uh, video, so if you haven't seen the movie and you care for spoilers, then please click out, save the video or something, but this is a spoiler uh, video, so I don't want to ruin the movie for anybody, so keep that in mind. Uh, and yeah, but before I get started, please make sure to leave a like, it would be very helpful, so please leave a like if you end up enjoying this video, it really helps out videos, so please leave a like. As well as subscribe, like I said, I really enjoy Eternals, and I really want to talk about it, so I have three Eternals videos coming up, or maybe even more, but... For sure three so subscribe for all those videos if you're really excited like me to talk about the movie subscribe for all those videos i definitely think you enjoy it and lastly comment down below on what were your thoughts on eternals remember his spoiler um video so you can put spoilers in the comments and everything as well as tell me your own personal ranking of the eternals down below so curious to see those lists so definitely make sure to tell me that down in the comments down below okay now let's get started Okay, so I'll start with the worst Eternal, in my opinion, and that is number 10, which is Sprite. I thought she was the worst Eternal, in my opinion, and the main reason for that is that I thought she complained a lot throughout the movie. I mean, the whole time she was mostly in a bad mood, just complaining and complaining and complaining. She did have some good moments, but for the most part, she was just complaining and complaining and complaining. Uh, and her crush was uh, Icarus, which made me feel uncomfortable. Like, I just, I just didn't like that story at all. I was like... Uh, that's a little weird don't, I don't really want to think about that and it just it wasn't something that I was like invested in that was more something that made me uncomfortable while watching the movie and also her being her frustration of being a kid it was very understandable and everything so I just said like that point but that didn't make her betray the team the thing that made her betray it was that she was jealous of Cersei and that uh, she was in love with Icarus which was so weird like to me that was just so weird so her character just kind of didn't work for me uh and also her powers were literally like Loki's powers I mean whenever she just created a bunch of versions of herself and Cersei at the start of the movie I was like that's Loki's move don't steal Loki's move and Loki is upon my favorite of the MCU I mean probably top three of my favorite characters in the MCU so to see her just kind of like use the same powers really like it bothered me I was like no that's Loki that's Loki don't do this no uh, so yeah it, she wasn't like a great character like I said I still liked her I thought she had some good moments some good adventure with the team and she just seemed like she cared about the team enough but like she complained a lot and even at the end she wasn't even grateful that, that Cersei gave her those powers so it was like, ah, uh, I mean, that Tracy gave her like an actual human life. So it was like, ah, uh, you're not very likable. So yeah, she comes in last, number 10. So that's great. Moving on to number nine, and this one's going to be controversial, I'm sure. But that is Ajek, 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 or whatever. I don't know how you say it, but the, the character played by Sama Hayek. And that's because the main reason is that she's not in the movie a lot. Like she's barely in the movie. Um, which is kind of sad. I was really looking forward to seeing more of her character, but she's barely in the movie, so she's not in the movie a lot. Uh, she also died really fast in the movie, really early on, and uh, we were just kind of told that she was a great character by other by the other Eternals. We were like, oh, she was the best of the best, or like she always held us together. She always made sure that we were fine and everything. But I just don't. I, they just kind of said it, and they usually didn't show it at all. So it was like. Mm, I mean, it was like, okay, thanks for telling me, but can you show me it? The only time that we actually saw that was with Faistos, whenever she was uh, talking to Faistos after the atomic bomb. But before that, we didn't really see her, like, taking care of the Eternals, but, like, emotionally, like, really connecting with them. So I just didn't feel that that true bond between them, so that everybody else was saying. So I didn't really think that. And also, I just, uh, I just didn't think that she was, like, very, like, rememberable from the movie i thought she was very unmemorable which was kind of sad but still i did like her i thought she, her powers were cool to heal people and everything i liked her as a leader and 
the thing that really elevated for me was her scene with Icarus whenever she got betrayed, obviously. How she, like, was telling Icarus all these things because she really trusted Icarus, you know what I mean? And how she gets betrayed and how she still tr tries to fight and everything. And she dies and everything. That brought her up and I was like, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. Really like her. But still, she had a, I mean, she had a great death scene, definitely, for sure. And she became key to the plot right after that betrayal scene. But before that, she wasn't much and after that she still had like very little screen time so she had to come number nine um so sorry for a fans she was still great but just not big enough in the movie for me to be like yay and that's why she's dead so she's not gonna show up in any other mcu projects i think so yeah that just kind of brings her down to number nine so yeah let's move on to number eight and this one's another very controversial one i am sure and that is because i put in number eight dina dina i put her number eight and that's because of a lot of things and I put it in number eight because I did like her character. I really did like her character. And I thought she had cool visual powers, like her creating weapons, her golden weapons. Awesome. Her golden weapons looked really, really cool. Um, they looked really awesome. She was also a very fierce warrior, kind of like how Wonder Woman should be. You know what I mean? And I really enjoyed that. I was like, yeah, I love her spirit to fight, wanting to fight and everything. I just really felt that warrior power. So I really liked that. And I found her relationship with Gogamesh really touching. And I really enjoyed that. So those are really good pros for Dina and everything. And Angelina Jolie did a great job with Dina as well. So that's great. However, her memory problem, I forgot what it was called, Mad Fury or something like that it was cool at the start but it got really wasted really fast and it prevented her from having a lot of action during the middle of the movie because she had to be benched because she couldn't fight because of her memory thing and it prevented her to not have a lot of presence during the middle of the movie uh which kind of hurt the character i think she should have had a lot more presence during the middle of the movie and the fact that we had to lose that because of her memory worry uh it was kind of like it kind of sacrificed the character a little bit and also they kind of didn't go anywhere with it i mean sure it showed that oh she remembers the past memories but like then it didn't do anything else with it they weren't like okay what did you remember so we can make a plan no it just kind of just it kind of just left her so that's why she's number eight i still really enjoyed her character i just wish she was a little a little bit more involved in everything she just seemed like an extra kind of character not super involved and the, only, the key that was supposed to make her involved was the memory worry which didn't really help and then her plot with the we wanted revenge on the deviant also didn't help because the deviant also was like not even supposed to be in the movie i mean he really was so extra to the movie so yeah that's the case still her powers are really cool and everything but just not my favorite and not on the top so yeah number eight Moving on to number seven, and this is a this character really hurt me to put him down here because I really enjoyed this character, but still he had to be somewhere, and that is Phaestos. Phaestos is my number seven eternal, and again he's another very likable character with great powers, like the invention power. I thought it was super super cool, and it really fit the story, and I really like how they put it in like the history of the world, how he affected uh, history because of his advancements, how he because of him that atomic bomb existed and that caused the world war ii bo atomic bomb um, bombing and how he was so devastated by that you know he was devastated because he led them there and i really found that very intriguing very touching and i was like poor face toast but like at the same time you understood and you were like yeah that's really sad and i can see why he would be so mad at humanity and everything so i thought that was great he also had a great representation for gay families which also really helped uh because i think everybody should represent it and that was great for gay people and gay families that he represented that type of community that was great and at the end uh whenever he was fighting icarus with his inventions awesome he was a total boss and everything so yeah i really like face those and his invention powers were really really cool and everything uh but, but my main problem with him was that he disappeared for a lot of the movie i mean a lot he was in it at the very start then he was almost in it at all into the very end of the movie into like the last third of the movie so that really hurt his character and also not all his jokes landed for me so that's another problem and i thought his powers weren't very visually uh visualized like that i don't think they were very well visualized like the other eternals where the powers were very visualized like dina had very nice visualized powers and uh everything and sprite had very nice visualized powers but face those didn't really he kind of you just saw him like going like this but you never saw him like visually be like oh this is stunning you know what i mean so I wish I would have visualized his powers a little bit cooler, and I think that would have maybe put him up a spot. But still, like I said, another very likable character. It's just that he disappeared through a lot of the movie, which really hurt his character. So yeah. Moving on to number six, and that is 
Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh was a great character for me. He was, I think, the kindest Eternal. He was so kind. He was great. He was also very funny. Like, his uh, a difference from face, those, his jokes actually landed a lot for me. So he was very funny. Like, whenever he said, I'm a big baby, that was really funny for me. And I really liked the relationship that he had with Dina. Like I said earlier, I really found that relationship really touching and everything. And I really enjoyed him. So, yeah, I really enjoyed that relationship. Also, his powers were really awesome with the super strength. And his fight teams were amazing. Like, whenever he was fighting the Deviants, whenever he was fighting Dina, he just felt the power that he had. You know, he felt his true power and everything. So, that was great. I really enjoyed that. Uh, and, yeah, he was a great character for me. I thought he was a really well-rounded character, a really great character, great Asian representation and everything. So, yeah, I thought he was a great character. The downside is that he died really early on in the movie, leaving him to get little screen time and also leaving him to not be important at the movie, almost. So, that puts him down on the spot. You know, if maybe he would have been all the way towards the end of the movie, he would have been way higher. But the fact that he kind of died really early on and he had very little importance in the movie as a whole put him spots down. So, that's... That, that really hurt the, the, him being uh, in sixth place. But still, like I said, I really enjoyed this character. I thought he was great. I do wish he would have fought Icarus because they kept fighting over who was stronger. And I really want to see him fight Icarus. And then he died. So that also, like, uh, I want to see him fight Icarus. But still, he was a great character and just another great eternal um, to the team. Okay, moving on to number five. And number five is Cersei. And Cersei is a great character for me. She was very kind, nice, and a great character overall, a great main lead. Uh, however, sometimes she felt a little generic. Like, you'd be like, okay, she's like the generic character. And she didn't have, like, a very large personality. So, she, usually, she got overshadowed a lot by other characters. So, I was like, oh, she's getting really overshadowed. But still... I thought she was very kind. Her character was still intriguing for me. Uh, it's just that other characters tried to overshadow her a, a lot. But since she did have the most screen time in the movie, she had a lot of um, importance in the movie, obviously. She was in the middle of Icarus. Like, she had a lot to do with Icarus' decision and everything. And everything. Thing. So she was very important in the movie, which put her up a spot. Also, like I said, she was just a nice character to have uh, as the lead. So that puts her up a spot. And her powers were really cool and very well visualized as well. Like, whenever the bus falls and she makes into petals, that was great. Or in the fight scene, whenever the demon attacks her, and then she makes, like, the the sidewalk, like, like um, able to go down, and the demon goes down, and then she makes it go hard again. So now he's stuck there. That was really cool and everything. And whenever she makes a tree, the demon a tree and everything. So, yeah, that's super cool. I thought her powers were really awesomely visualized. So that also puts her up a spot. So, yeah, that's why Cersei is my number five. Moving on to my number four, and I really thought he was going to be in my top three because he was a great character, but unfortunately he didn't make it to our top three, and that is Kingo. Like, Kingo was such a great character. He was really, really, really funny. Like, really, really funny. Uh, his jokes really cracked me up a lot. A scene stealer for sure. I mean, he had a very loud personality that really just those scenes and everything. I was like, this guy is great. This guy is great. Uh, what's the actor's name? Kumail Nunjani? I, I'm mispronounced that for sure but the actor did a great job with his role i thought he was so funny the smothery look that he did whenever he was doing the whenever he was filming was great and i thought his life was cool like the fact that he became an actor and the fact that you know he was like his he's like his ancestor and his past ancestor and his dad and that's how that's what his excuse is to, for him being in hollywood or in bollywood so much and everything it was really cool really funny and i like that he was like a media star and everything and like he i like that joke whenever he was like i'm not doing it for the views i'm doing it for respect or something like that that was really funny because you can tell he was getting very little views and everything so yeah i really like that i really like the media star also his powers were very really, visually really cool with the guns like with the fingers that were like guns and whenever he made like that big gun and then he like shot it to the deviant's face and everything awesome amazing and just really really cool and then he was like did you get a line camera really funny and i just thought he was great i really thought he was a great character the thing that made him don't go down a spot was the fact that he left for the final battle like he was just like peace out i don't really believe in anything of this so he just left that made him go down the spots just because i just felt like oh he kind of he, he could have been so cool against Icarus. I really want to see him fight Icarus too. And the fact that he left, I was like, okay, fine, I guess. I guess. I can't really say anything. Fine. So, yeah, I put him down a spot. But still, he was a great character. Really enjoyed him. And I can't wait to see him again. I really want to see this character again because he was really funny. Moving on to my number third spot. And this is a character that I was very surprised to like, actually. I thought he was going to be my least favorite. But, wow, he was actually great. And that is Drig. I think that's how you say his name. I might be saying it completely wrong, but uh, Drake or whatever you say, the guy that can mind control people, that was my favorite character. This one, this character is a character that the beliefs really intrigued me. Like, wow, he really had very strong beliefs. From the very beginning of the movie, he thought that 
letting people be at war was completely bad. He mind controlled them to find peace and everything. And I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed seeing his viewpoints. From very early on in the movie, how he left the Eternals to cause peace to these people and everything. That was really cool. His his also his mind controlling powers were very visually awesome. Uh, whenever he made people do do stuff, like whenever the deviant attacked in the forest, and then he made the people get his shotguns, get the shotguns and shoot him and shoot him and shoot him. I thought that was great. Like that just shows that he's a scary person. Like he's not at all good. You know, he's still bad. He still has bad in him, but still, like I was like, that's very visually cool, very awesome. Kind of like Wanda ish with the town, which I also found the like, comparison kind of cool. And uh, yeah, I thought his powers were great. Like I said, his chemistry with Makari was amazing. Like I totally felt that. I thought they were the best relationship in the movie, or the best couple, even though they aren't actually a couple. But still, that was great. I really enjoyed him. Uh, I like how he played with people with the, his team's like feelings, because you know he's a mind person, and the way that he played with each other, with everyone, Icarus, with uh, what's his name, uh, Kingo, and everybody. I thought that was great, and I just really enjoyed his character. I thought it was great, and I want to see him again. I want to see him use his brain powers again. I want to see what he can. Do with this so yeah excited to see him going forward and a great character in the movie who had a lot to do in the movie as well and moving on to my second favorite character that is going to be makari and makari is my second favorite character i mean she was amazing she was awesome she was so cool she was so likable she was really likable i mean i was just like this guy this girl is really likable like this this person seems so cool to hang out with she had energy that popped out of the screen without a single word you know she she couldn't even talk but without a single word her energy popped out of the screen and i thought that was amazing great from the actress i don't know the actress's name but great acting from the actress i mean like wow like i said energy that popped out of the screen i was very impressed also good representation for deaf people using sign language throughout the whole movie really really great for that but like, especially the energy that popped out of her like the likability like i want to hang out with that person you know i mean that that's the type of feeling that i got from seeing her which was great and also her super speed glories i mean super speed was amazing i couldn't think of a better way to do her super speed and like, whenever she was running and the camera was looking at her and you just saw everything around her move it looked so cool i mean you felt the power of super speed you know usually whenever you do those type of running shots you do it you do it on a third person view and you see her like you see the, the speedster running from the side like in the flash most of the time you see you see that but here no you saw it like from the front view and you saw everything moving everything changing and everything and it looked amazing i mean i felt the power i felt the destructiveness of the super speed and everything and it looked awesome and whenever you took a farther look you, she looked like a shooting star whenever she was running because of her golden power so that looked amazing i was like that's so cool and then the way that she used it as to like push somebody you know she said like i said wave like whenever she was at the very start of the movie whenever she was on the deviant and she said to push the deviant's leg over and over and over it was so 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 cool i was like that's so cool or whenever she was fighting icarus and she was just like punching straight to boom 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 i mean that was amazing i thought she was awesome 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 i was fully amazed every time she was in her powers i was like wow this girl has the super speed and everything amazing i mean i can't wait to see more of her in the mcu she's by far the person that i want to see more in the mcu like please give me a whole decent pleasure of her if you can i mean she was amazing her chemistry with Druig was amazing like i said i really felt the heat and the chemistry between them as a couple and everything and yeah i just amazing i was very amazed with her character the biggest surprise in the movie for me and yeah great just great great overall um please give me more of her Marvel, please give me more of her. The only reason why she's not in my first place is because she had very little screen time during the mood of the movie. She had like almost no screen time. Like she was at the start, disappeared, and came back at the end. Just like Fastos. So I was like, I'm sorry, you have to go to second place. I'm so sorry. But like how much I actually like the character, she's probably in my first place. It's just her screen time made her go second place. So that's the only reason why. But still, like I said, please Marvel, give me more of her, please. And my number one spot, and this is a character that by this moment, you already know who it is, but still, my number one spot is Icarus. Icarus, what a great character. I mean, what a great character. He has so many layers to him, which is what made me like him. I tend to really like these characters with so many layers to him, to, to them. For example, in Falcon and Soldier, I, my favorite character was John Walker because of how many layers he had and complexities to the character and everything. And that's how I feel about Icarus. I mean, Icarus had all these layers to him, had all these cool things to him as well. And I just really enjoyed him. Like, for example, the fact that he betrayed his team because he, his fate was so strong with uh, a Shimmer, I think I think that was Celestia's name. That was so cool, like like the betrayal scene, whenever you see him kill Ayak, the Samahai character. 
it was amazing. I was like, wow, that like I was like, this guy is terrifying. He's cool, and you understand all of a sudden why he was so quiet the whole time, why he left Cersei, why he he left Cersei because he couldn't tell her the truth and everything. I mean, I thought his character had so much complexity to him. It felt kind of like a tragedy with his character as well. And also, you felt like the elegance. Every time you fly, you felt like the power. His lasers, I mean, the lasers looked awesome. Especially, like, the golden lasers. Like, whenever he shoots it, like, to the sky in the final battle. Awesome. Like, I really enjoyed it. Whenever he was, um, whenever he shot it to the grass, whenever he killed Ajax. And then, like, there was fire where he had, like, the body of uh, Sam Hayek, Ajax dead. Uh, uh, dead Ajax or Dead Sam Hayek, whatever you want to say. Uh, I thought that shot was really, really cool. I mean, the elegance of the character was just felt throughout the whole movie. Uh, the, also, whenever he was battling with his laser eyes, like they were like fighting with the laser eyes in between him. But it was very visually cool, visually done, amazingly. I mean, I really just enjoyed it, Chris, a lot, a lot. Uh, whenever he was fighting the Deviant, and you just it just felt so real. He was like squishing his face and everything. He was trying to shoot a laser and everything. I mean, wow, I love it, Chris. I love, I love him. I know the evil Superman trope is already like really overplayed, but still. I don't care. The Icarus was amazing. I thought his motivation was great. And then whenever he fights towards the sun, because he just couldn't live with it with, with like that, with what he had done already, and he was like done with life. I don't think he's dead, obviously. Like, y'all didn't see the body melt. That means he's not dead, according to me, okay? But still, I thought that was very poetic. I thought that was very cool. And the, his entrance uh, in, the, in the present, whenever he fights the Deviant, and then he comes out of, like, the store with, like, the neon lights in the back. I mean, I thought he was really cool. I was I was really amazed by his character. I thought he was amazing. And, yeah, like, really enjoyed his character. Awesome character. Love the complexities to the character. I really felt like they were explored as well and everything. And I love that the whole team trusted him and everything. I mean, I just thought he was a great character. So, yeah go Icarus and everything uh, and yeah he was so important to the plot as well and everything so that's why he's my number one and yeah I hope that I hope that you agree hopefully maybe you might you guys might hate him because of what he did I don't know I don't know what do people think about Icarus tell me down in the comments as well as tell me your own ranking down in the comments I'm very curious to hear your own ranking so please tell me down in the comments I'm gonna read them for sure you can argue about why one of my characters should be higher one of my characters should be lower I'm curious do all that down in the comments but just keep it healthy keep a healthy discussion but still go ahead tell me down in the comments I'm definitely gonna read them respond to them and yeah very curious so do that also make sure to subscribe if, like if you enjoyed this video then please subscribe it would be very helpful like i said i'm gonna be talking about eternals a lot more in future videos so subscribe for all those videos as well as like if you enjoyed the video please leave a like please i would be very helpful so please leave a like and yeah that'll be it thanks for watching hope you have a great rest of your day and this is jvg entertainment out